What's up, guys? It's Mike Frank with Berkshire Hathaway, Frank Oliver and Company, coming to you today to talk a little bit about are we reliving 2008? On the top of everybody's mind is that there's this big market shift happening and it's big and it's scary and nobody knows where we're headed and all they know is when they were in college or when they were in high school or when they were in elementary school and their parents were going through this, which is this big, scary place to be, whatever it might have been. And people think, oh my God, market change. We must be reliving past, right? So there's a lot of reasons why I don't anticipate anything like 2008 happening. When we're talking about 2008, we're talking about one of the largest recessions in the housing market ever. We're talking about a recession of our economy, of our housing market, and basically a crumbling down of the entire mortgage industry as we know it today. So um, there's a lot of reasons why people think that we might be reliving a situation similar because, hey, there's a spike in housing prices. Knock, knock, knock. If you woke up yesterday and you didn't know, housing prices in your community are probably 20% higher than they were three years ago, right? There's interest rates that are rising at a rapidly quick pace. In January, we were looking at three, three and a half, four percent interest rates. Today, we're looking at six, six and a half percent. Depends on your situation, but that's a big difference. And with the stock market correction, making adjustments for itself, kind of the way the stock market does. I don't want to say anything here because it's not my area of expertise, but it's scary. Now the market's starting to cool down and buyers are feeling a little bit more time and patience and sellers are a little bit more stressed and frustrated. And there's a lot more pricing drops happening. And why is all of that happening? Well, I think one of the first things that people need to understand is that sellers are not just assholes. I had a conversation with a couple of my friends a few weeks back talking about sellers are just assholes. They're just greedy. They just want all the money. They don't want to accept what their house is properly worth. And it's interesting, but what I say is that they're not assholes. Sellers just, they have envy. It's like FOMO, their fear of missing out on the opportunity that could have been. John and Sally down the street sold with 17 offers for $50,000 over list price. And now I'm priced $50,000 over their house and I can't sell. Well, no wonder. Why do you think that happens? So it goes back to what we talked about a couple weeks ago, which is pricing your home accordingly. Pricing your home according to the market, not just what the neighbor's house sold for. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but something that you guys should know is that today, mortgage industry is backed by a lot more regulation, stronger financial accounting, accountability. There's a lot more to it that's just not as easy as some of the ways that we used to do loans. In 2008, the average homeowner was buying with a 699 credit score. Now, some of you might be thinking 699, that's great, but it's an average. And today, the average homeowner is buying with a 751. 751. Think of that. That's a 52 per, uh, point increase in average. How many more qualified borrowers are coming to the table today than were in 2008? Number two, their borrowers were in 2008 were simply stating their assets and their income liabilities, right? They're, they're able to walk into a bank and say, I make about this. I have seven cars and two trucks and a house, beach house in Savannah, but I want to buy this house here in Baltimore. And they were able to just sort of state it with very minimal expectations from the lending companies. There was minimal expectations on the borrower to prove that asset and income verification. And today there's a lot of supporting documentation. If you haven't bought a home in the last seven years, you don't even understand. Buying a house in today's market is incredibly difficult, but it's designed that way to prevent issues like what we had in 2008. And the last one, I'm not even going to read you guys the statistic because it's kind of a crazy thought. It's kind of a crazy thought that people were underwater on the value of the home that they purchased. They have a mortgage for $385,000 and their, ha- their home is only worth three hundred and seventy, dollars Or even worse, it's only worth three hundred and thirty, three hundred and ten. dollars What we see today is that borrowers that purchased a home in the last 12 months have 7, 10, 15% equity. The average homeowner today has over 10% equity. Average average homeowner today has over 10% equity, which means that if they had to sell their home for less than what they paid for it, they've gained so much equity that they've got the opportunity to build more value. And we build equity in many different ways. We build equity through maybe 
a cash out refi, invest in the home, create an opportunity for our home to have more value. We build equity by paying off debt faster. We build equity by creating more opportunity for our home to have more value. And if we had to sell our home for a little bit less than what we paid for it last year, hopefully there's a reason and there's a congruency in the marketplace where they're going to be able to buy at a better rate as well. So remember that when you're thinking that today is going to be the next 2008, there's a lot of statistics that support something that says very much the opposite. I mean, the key differences that we've had in the world have given people less chance to buy something they can't afford, less chance to overrun themselves with debt and less chance to get themselves into a situation, whether it be because of training or because of pride or because of their ability to keep their credit scores high, right? It's less opportunity for people to fail in the home ownership process. There's a lot more to the market. And what we're anticipating is that this shift in the market, this cool down of the market is a normal market. It's a normal place where people go into seven houses and they find one that they like and they make an offer and they negotiate a little bit with the seller. That's a normal market. That's not 2008. That's a normal position for us to be in. Heaven forbid we make two offers. What if we got four people competing for the same beautiful house? like the one that we just put on the market. We're going to get four beautiful offers. Well, pfft, that's not because the market's crazy hot or crazy slow. It's just today. And tomorrow is going to be a little bit different. But if you don't go back to the basics of understanding how to hire the right agent, how to hire the right person to represent you in the process of buying and selling a home, you're going to be in a world of hurt when you realize that you listed your property for $390,000. You dropped it to three eighty. dollars now you drop to the 375, you fire that agent, you hire the next agent, they come in, they price it at 350, and they still can't sell your home. What if you sold the home, listed, hired the right agent, the first person, like this guy that walks in the door and says, hey, your house is worth 369. That's what your house is worth. If you overprice your home, you're gonna suffer for a long period of time. You gotta go back to the basics. You gotta realize exactly what your house is worth. Pricing it according to the market, figuring out exactly how you can get into the position of buying a good equity in today's difficult market. It's not a market crash. It's not a recession. A recession is defined as a 10% loss in value of a specific item. We are not in a housing recession. There has never been any 10% change in our market. So before we run to have cause for concern, why don't we sit down and talk to our real estate professionals? Our team has been doing equity reviews with our clients for the last three, four, five weeks. We're gonna be doing them throughout the rest of the year. If you have any questions, reach out, PM, DM, or subscribe to the link below if you haven't already. You can always call me. If you have any questions, reach out and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for weekly content. Also, check out our social media pages. The links are in the description below. See you next week.